Hello students and welcome to the video lecture on chemical reaction engineering 2 course. We are discussing on catalysis and catalytic reactors. We have been discussing in our past lectures about the different reactor systems that can handle the decaying catalyst. In this series, we have seen and talked on temperature time trajectories which handles the slower decay of catalyst. We have seen the relation of a temperature and a time where we ramp up the temperature with the time frame in such a way that the rate does not alter and the throughput of the system remains consistent. In line, we moved on to have a second reactor and a study that handles the moderate decay of a catalyst, which was moving wet reactor. We are also gone through the expression in how the conversion and the activity as the function of weight of catalyst is derived for moving wet reactor. In line to this, we have also solved an example to find out the conversion in the moving bed reactor using these relations. Now, today's topic is continuation in the last part of this about a reactor that handles a rapid decay of catalyst which is straight through transport reactor. This reactor is also called as circulating fluidized bed reactor or popularly called CFBR. Now in the moving bed reactor we have seen that there is a reactor on the left hand side where a separator feeds the reactor with a catalyst that moves as a closed packing through the reactor where you have a feed and you get the product. The spent catalyst from this reactor moves to the kiln where it gets regenerated or decoking is done using air but the particle size in the moving bed reactor is good big enough that is one fourth to one eighth inch so you need a secondary air which is required to lift this catalyst particle which are now regenerated back to the separator where the moving air lifting air gets out and you fill the catalyst back to the reactor On a pretty similar line, we have STTR or circulating fluidized bed reactor. The chain what do you see here? Here are also the three sections, a reactor, a separator and a regenerator. On the other way around, you have fresh catalyst that is being fed to the bottom of the riser where you have a gas feed through this riser actually the reaction takes place this catalyst and feed are such that the catalyst particle size is too low and the gas feed takes away the particle with it so this riser section is basically the reactor section as in the case of CFBR, this particles get disengaged here, the gas goes to the stripper and the catalyst which are used or spent 
that goes for catalyst regeneration. Let us have a look at a further detailed picture of CFBR. This is what we are talking of. We are having a feed and you are having a regenerated catalyst coming from a regenerator that is being carried away in the riser where the preliminary reaction takes place where catalyst gets removed and comes back suspend catalyst into the regenerator where you decoke or regenerate the catalyst by using air flue gas goes off and the used catalyst regenerated one comes back and the bottom to move again with the feed these two small things these are the smaller cyclones so that to reduce the entrainment of the final particles into the product stream let us have a look in further detail on what we have seen in our notes straight through transport reactor it's a very important to note and very often utilized in petrochemical industries for cracking of petroleum products FCC we call it fluidized catalytic cracking that is where this is being used most important point here is the bulk density of the catalyst particle bulk density of the catalyst particle is significantly smaller than that of a moving bed reactor in moving bed reactors we have talked particle size in the range of about 3 mm to about 6 mm while here it will be far less than that which allows the particle to be carried up away with the gas velocity which is being fed to the reactor. We have already discussed on to the reactor and its functioning. So let us go on to derive the design equation for this reactor. Now in moving bed reactor we had a compact packing over which we were taking the mole balance. Now the riser here is now the place where we have to look for the balance. So we are taking a differential reactor volume between Z and Z plus DZ height where we are going to use the cross sectional area remains constant so Z to Z plus DZ is where we are going to take this mole balance. So there is flow in to flow out at Z plus DZ plus a reaction term equals to zero. Now RA represents the volumetric rate that means the unit is mole per meter cube or mole per volume. Now if I rearrange this so I will get DFA by this dz goes to the bottom dfa by dz is ra into a c so we are dividing by dz and taking the limit going to zero now this is volumetric rate which we already talked of mole per volume and ra prime or ra dash this is mole per weight of catalyst so if I want to get back to Ra mole per volume I have to multiply it by rho P that is the density not a bulk density. Now if I convert Fa into the conversion terms and catalytic activity Fa is Fa naught into 1 minus Xa that means my dfa will become minus dxa that is what has come out to be here dx by dz that is equal to ra prime 
Now this is as any instance. So using the activity term, we are telling array dash at in the initial time into activity. So this consists takes care of the dk and this is the initial rate row b into ac as it is and dfa will get fn naught into dx so this fn naught is coming in the bottom so that is what the design equation we are having for conversion now my conversion is changing with respect to the height of the reactor while my activity is changing with the time so it is justified if we'll take everything that should be a function of the height of a reactor rather than being the time so the catalyst particle that is traveling through the reactor a particle velocity of up i can write up as a particle velocity as the z is the distance travel upon time so that gives me as a particle velocity so in other words i can write time being z by up so i can replace now this time in the equation 136 telling that a being function of time a being function of z and particle velocity so that is where i get the form of dx by dz rho b is here upon fn naught now fn naught is what we would like to express in terms of a gas velocity and the concentration terms so fn naught is ca naught into volumetric flow rate now volumetric flow rate becomes again into velocity into area but this time it is gas velocity rather than the particle velocity. Activity, we have to take care of particle velocity, this being the gas velocity. It is quite good assumption to say that up and ug, that is particle velocity and gas velocity in SCTR are approximately same there is not much of a difference though we are mentioning both differently for our sake for getting the correct expression so fn0 becomes ug into ac into c0 so substituting this equation 10 138 is the final design equation for us where the change in conversion along the height of a reactor in a CFBR is rho b into a into r prime on c naught into ug ac at the bottom and ac at the top gets cut this equation we are going to use as a design equation for calculating conversion in a circulating fluidized wet reactor or st TR. Looking for the application of this equation, we'll go through this example which is 10.8 which talks on the decay in the strength STTR reactor. So it's a cracking vapor gas phase cracking reaction of a gas oil which is to be carried out in a STTR. You are given height and you are given diameter that means you are given actually the area cross-sectional area and z is given so your z varies from 0 to 10 and using diameter you can find the cross-sectional area this gas oil mixture there is a lot of product but these all are lumped together into a single species we call the A we shall also lump the primary hydrocarbon product. There are multiple products but that are being lumped into two different. One is B and another is C. And there is a dry gas, another is the gasoline. And that obviously the catalyst has coke. So gas oil is giving you products plus coke. Here you have A gives B plus C plus coke. Now the mechanism for this has been derived and the rate law has been given as k prime pa 
So the partial pressure of A, partial pressure of B, partial pressure of C is dependent. That it suggests that everything is getting absorbed onto the surfaces. A for obvious reasons and B and C are also absorbed, so they all come into the bottom part. Now P A upon one plus K P A would suggest that initially it will be rising and later it will be independent of P A. So the parameters of the rate law, rate law by K prime and the equilibrium constants are given. The catalyst DK law is also given, which is this we already studied. 1 upon 1 plus 80 raised to power half. The following parameter A is given as 7.6. Now, important to know, although it is a gas phase reaction, pure gas is entering, so your epsilon has to be nil. Uh, sorry, your fraction has to be nil, it is 100% pure A, which is entering at a pressure of 12 atmosphere and a temperature of 400 degree. The bulk density is also given for the catalyst, that is rho B value is given. You have to find out or plot activity and conversion. So you have to plot this activity and using the design equation you have to find out the conversion or given a gas velocity of entering 2.5 meter per second so that's an extensive statement which is already been given to us you can directly use this design equation you are given our a value or a prime value but this we need that in you need z by up, you need rho b, rho b is already given, a, a is given to you as a function, t raised to power half, so you need z and up value, c a naught and ug, so c a naught is not known to us, ug and up is what we need to get into. So let us see how the thing has been approached here. So, starting with the mole balances, this is the first equation that we have already written, F in on dx by dz is minus Ra into AC, this is volumetric rate, F in on, we know that it is gas velocity into the cross-sectional area into C in on, that becomes Ra upon Ug into C in on. Now, this is our equation number one, which will talk on changing conversion. We need Ra. Now, Ra, we know that it is Ra prime into rho b, and Ra prime is A into Ra prime at t equal to zero. So, for a fresh catalyst at time equal to zero, this equation is already being known to us. So my Ra at t equal to 0 is known, so Ra prime becomes activity term into the rate equation which is given. So rho b into a into the equation. So 10 8.5 becomes my rate which I'll feed in 10 8 1. Now the parameter which is not known to us is a and a very good assumption here where the particle velocity and gas velocity are considered to be same which is equal to u so we have already known this gas velocity of particle velocity z by t so t becomes z by u you are given a is equal to 1 upon 1 plus a into t raised to power half. Following parameter is 7.6. So z by u raised to power half. So the velocity will be find out by volumetric flow rate upon the cross-sectional area. This is an important equation which we should be using it. This is gas phase reaction, so we need V0 into 1 plus epsilon x. 
by AC where AC is pi by 4 d square this is already computed thing which we don't know is epsilon v not value is also being known to us so because it's a gas phase reaction so pa becomes pa not 1 minus x upon 1 plus epsilon x this is on the part of the reactant on the product form this directly becomes instead of 1 minus x this becomes x pb is pa not x into upon 1 plus epsilon x and pb is equal to pc as it is molar formation on the product side. So let us look at the epsilon value which we have not computed here. It is y0, y0 being the pure component of pure feed which we have said. Delta is the change in the number of moles. So you have two moles of product, one mole of reactant. So that gets one. U is u0 into 1 plus epsilon x so v0 by ac becomes u0 u0 value is given to us which is 2.5 cn0 value we can calculate as pn0 upon r into t0 total pressure temperature was given 400 r value is known you get the CN0 value. So now you have CN0, you have U, you have epsilon, so PA, PB, PC on this as a function of x are possible. You being known U, you will be able to calculate the value of A. Going back here, rho B is given. Now A is computable to us. Going back, CN0 we have calculated UG equal to U that is u0 into 1 plus u into 1 plus epsilon x this is also known to us now so all the things which are required to solve 10 a to 1 are now be computed which we can at the end we have to put it in a polymath where a differential equation and explicit equations can be put together to solve this let us see how it has been done. So dx by dz minus ra upon u0 into ca0. Now ra being function of ka, kb, kc because this is our ra which is a into k prime pa 1 plus k pa kb pb kc pc. Now pa, pb and pc. Now pa, pb and pc in terms of x it is being written k prime value and other three constants are already given here a as a function of 1 plus 1 1 by 1 plus 7.6 z by u is to power half this equation we have put u as u0 into 1 minus x has been used c a 0 as p a 0 rt is used u0 initial value is given d is given so you can find out the area k prime is there density value is given temperature r so we have clubbed everything together here so that it is solvable we have got the green light because we have the z value coming from maximum value of z is 10 so we are solving from initial to final value of 10 so let us run this we see the graph we see the report and that is what we have as the graph talking of we are looking for two yeah so that is what we have conversion is increasing from zero to roughly 50 55 percent and the activity is dropping to a very minimal value. So it was very much active to a very very short time or a very short height. If you look at here, it's a very short, less than a mid, less than a meter or less than half a meter actually, and then it is going slowly towards. 
if we look at the results here conversion is going to 55 percent and the activity is actually dropping to 0 0.04 by the end of length if you want to resolve and see what will be the conversion if the height is roughly say quarter of 0.25 conversion is going to 12% which is fairly less for one it is going to 25 and this is what what we are not seeing when it has been solving let us go here and the activity has sufficiently dropped conversion is about 12 roughly after 5 if you look at the pressure how it is function of pressure it will be interesting to know let's not look at the other portions so you see this one A is a partial pressure is getting reduced towards the length and the products are piling up so the pressure of B and C are increasing so this was our aim you can play with the graphs and plot and see which factors are working and how it is impacting. So this is what even expected here and it is being shown in the plot. So that has been the end of this chapter. Let us have a quick review on what we have studied today. We have been discussing on third reactor system which can handle a very rapid decay of the catalyst that straight through transport reactor we say your peculiarly said that the bulk density of this catalyst particle is very very low compared to the moving bed reactor that is where it has been carried out by the gas feed itself into the reactor the reaction takes place into the riser which has been followed by a separation and then a regeneration before coming back to the as a field to move over with, with the gas we have derived a design equation where the conversion along the length of the reactor as a function of the known variables has been derived. We have also seen an example which peculiarly talks on this where a catalytic cracking of a gas oil has been discussed and we have found out a plot of activity and conversion along the length of a reactor using this design equation using polymath. So that's all we have for today's lecture. Uh, that is the end of this unit on catalysis and catalytic reactor. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you all.